Hi, I'm Lauren Hall. I go to Catholic Central High School Junior High, and I'm in seventh grade, and my project is Can Teachers Decode Text the Way a Dyslexic Sees It? To start out, my abstract is my personal struggle led me to this project. It is hard to tell my teachers what I see and how I feel. I wanted to show them the difference between what they see versus what I see by reading two separate passages. I wanted them to feel the pressure of being watched and timed while they tried to read. I wanted to see how it made them feel after trying it. How much longer did it take them to read the dyslexic passage? My hypothesis is I did not think teachers would be able to decode text as I see it. It's more than just a few switched or backwards letters as pe many people think. Texts move around, words squeeze together, some letters are backwards like B, D, P, Q, M, W. Some words even disappear. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that includes difficulty reading. It's not that you are dyslexics are dumber, we just take more time to read. It is the most common learning disability. Levels of the disorder vary. Common symptoms reading below age level, difficulty finding right words, problems remembering sequences, pronunciation, rhyming, math word problems, spelling, learning a foreign language, spending a long time on tasks, avoiding reading, forgetfulness, disorganization, memorizing numbers or names. What is dyslexia, you may be asking. Dyslexia is not a problem with intelligence. Most dyslexics have an average or above average IQ. It is not laziness. It is not an issue with focus. It is not just reading letters backwards. So, dyslexia is due to differences in parts of the brain that help people read. So, you see an average reader, like an average non-dyslexic reader, uses three parts, then the dyslexic reader uses one part. MRI studies show the difference. Dyslexics use only the right side of their brain to read. So you see the non-dyslexic uses both sides. The dyslexic uses one side. One in five students have some form of dyslexia. Many dyslexics go undiagnosed. It can run in families. If ignored, it can lead to trouble keeping up with peers, low self-esteem, behavioral problems, anxiety, aggression, withdrawal. Testing for dyslexia, there is no single test. Parents, teachers are questioned and students. Academic st skills are tested. IQ is tested. Sometimes there are vision, hearing, neurological testing. A typical reader, IQ, and reading are linked over time. Dyslexic students, IQ, and reading are separate. This is why a highly intelligent dyslexic student can have low reading score. A typical dyslexic student reads 50 to 150 words per minute. A typical student of the same age can read an average of 250 words per minute. Schools and teachers can help by having patients, like a lot of patients, conduct early assessment and intervention, provide emotional support, use techniques using hearing, vision, and touch to improve reading, 
work in smaller groups several times a week, have teachers trained in dyslexic teaching, schools have a legal obligation to develop an IEP to provide help and accommodations for students. Accommodations do not give dyslexic students an advantage, but instead level the playing field. Additional time to finish work and take tests has a huge impact on the obligation to understand and succeed. Dyslexia robs a person of time, accommodations, return it. Dr. Sally Shaywick said that. It's not all bad. Dyslexia can be an advantage. We have excellent thinking skills. We learn through meaning, not memorization. We get the big picture. We have great imagination and creativity. We connect well with others. We have strong visual memory. We are good puzzle, puzzle service solvers. Dyslexics can distribute their attention more broadly than others. We have an increased sense of social awareness. We can see beyond our own immediate concerns and interactions. What this means, we help others. A large percentage of the world's most successful doctors, scientists, creative professionals, and enterprisers are dyslexic. Albert Einstein's dyslexic, Orlando Bloom, a dyslexic actor, is dyslexic, Richard Branson, Steven Spielberg, I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce his name, Thomas Edison, even Tom Cruise. I talked to 30 teachers, elementary to high school, and I had them sign permission slips. First, they attempted to read the dyslexic passage while I timed them with a stopwatch. Next, they read the normal passage while I timed them with a stopwatch. Then, I figured the time difference between the two readings. I asked these teachers to write about how it made them feel after doing this and being timed. I repeated this process with each participant. So this is what you see, and then this is what I see. As you can see, letters are switched, disappeared, and fading. Words run together, words split apart. Now imagine it moving or shaking also. So here are my results. The average time for the normal text was 31 seconds. Uh, the average time for the dyslexic text was two minutes and 48 seconds. The difference in between those both were one minute and 40, not, I mean, sorry, one minute and 59 seconds. Eight participants gave up. Longest time to read the dyslexic passage was eight minutes and 16 seconds. Shortest time reading the normal passage was 20 seconds. In conclusion, as I suspected, I it took teachers much longer to decode the te dyslexic text. On average, almost two minutes longer. What surprised me was the number of teachers who gave up after less than one minute. So I had teachers write how it made them feel and stuff. And here is some of the stuff they said that really stood out to me. It honestly made me want to cry. I understand why some kids give up. It actually gave me a headache. I did a lot of skipping and guessing. 
I had to put a lot of mental energy and concentration into it. It made me feel discouraged and frustrated. It looked like a foreign language. It made me feel apprehensive reading out loud when others were listening. It finally gave I finally gave up. It made I felt embarrassed. I couldn't do it. I completely missed I completely missed the main point of the passage. There was a sense of self-doubt. How awful it is to not have help figuring out what the passage said. Thank you for opening my eyes. Some of my personal struggle, struggles were in kindergarten and first grade. I struggled with rhyming and sight words. Homework took a very long time and ended in tears for both me and my mom. My first grade teacher told my mom I just needed to focus more. My mom reached out to one of her old teachers who observed me for a day and at school and agreed with my mom's there was some kind of learning disability. She also taught my dad and both my uncles who now looking back were probably undiagnosed with dyslexia. In second grade, my teacher agreed and the testing process started. I was officially diagnosed and received my IEP in February of that year. I worked with a tutor twice a week every summer since I was diagnosed so I can keep on track. At my last review, the school district added my problems with anxiety to my IEP. The dyslexia makes my, the anxiety worse and the anxiety makes the dyslexia symptoms worse. My eye doctor checks me regularly and I see a specialist for my anxiety. Teachers can help students by having patience with us. We are trying. Please follow our accommodations, like please. We are not lazy. Unlike my experiment participants, we cannot give up when working. Making notes in a different color and using some bold text can help. Use a sans surf font. I use this throughout this whole slideshow and throughout my project. It is free online. Here is the website. Here are the sources I used for my research. If I had continued this experiment, I'd probably ask for permission to record participants and check their accuracy when reading the dyslexic text. Our IEP benchmarks include both the number of words per minute and the accuracy. I hope my project can help struggling students like me so their parents and teachers can better understand what we see and how we feel. Thank you.